good morning and welcome back to Why in the Morning at Y254. My name is Sankara Kayesu and I'm here with the discussion of the day. Today we are going to discuss about reading culture. Reading culture, somebody has described it to me here as an environment or putting an environment where reading is valued, promoted and actively encouraged. Putting an environment where reading is valued, promoted, and actively encouraged. And that is what we are going to discuss here. On our social media handles, we asked, why do you think nowadays you don't see people with those big novels reading? I used to be, I used to see when I was young, that people, especially girls, university girls, used to carry big books, very big books. You wonder when she will stop or end reading it. But now that is no more. We are going to see what has really happened with reading culture. And with me in studio, those who have joined me, are two people who are very relevant to this topic. One is a student who is supposed to be really reading, will know whether he's reading or not, and now a specialist. A student is called Enoch, and uh, a specialist, a reading specialist, is called Joseph. I love their names, their names are biblical. So can you introduce yourself, starting with Enoch? Tell us everything about you that uh, you think we need to know your name, your uh, uh, area of study, where you study, and uh, maybe your social media handles in this camera here. Okay. Uh, my name is Enoch Nyamongo. I'm a student at uh, the University of Nairobi, a second year taking Bachelor of Arts Anthropology. Uh, also, I'm so interested uh, my major part as a talented guy. I'm an MC of Nairobi University, uh, and I love reading. What do you mean MC? You do MC? The... I usually host some events. Oh, okay. Uh, mostly talent, uh, talent events in Nairobi University. Uh, like televised? or something at the UN TV yeah, or something. Yeah, okay. Talents, uh, we majorly focus on growing talents in the university. Okay. So we usually hold some events, editions, uh, UN talents editions, where we are we are having our students who come to participate. Okay. And also compete where we, we uh, get them and nurture their talents. That's nice, Enoch. Yeah. Enoch Nyamongo. Nyamongo. Yeah, yeah. Welcome to White Five Four. Yeah, sorry. and then we have Joseph. Joseph, how are you? I'm fine, man. How are you doing? Oh, you good. Yes, yeah. yes, sir. And uh, you're welcome to White Five Four. Mm, you can you. tell us about yourself. Uh, my name is Joseph Moore. I'm an author. I'm a publisher. And um, I'm an advocate for the reading culture, and I'm also a motivational speaker. I'm so passionate about books and the power that it can bring to people. That's exactly why I'm here, to have it in, on the table, to show you how this can be valuable to your life. Do you have social media handles? Yes, you can find me on social media at Joseph Moore Official, all platforms, YouTube, TikTok, everywhere. Oh, you're welcome, Joseph Moore. Oh, let's start with you on this. Uh, are you saying you are an advocate of reading culture because you see there's a problem with reading culture in our country, or what has motivated you to be an advocate of reading culture? Well, there's, there's a huge problem with the reading culture in our country, especially Africa in general. Mm -hmm. People don't read. People have lost it. I mean, anytime somebody sees a book, they just see something which is going to bore them, mm. something which is just going to waste their time. Mm. But then when you go back in time, these were valuables. There were things which when people had them, they were equivalent to wealth, a vast amount of wealth. If you look at history, you'll find people used to pose with books, scrolls, all these things. Libraries were places of value, places where people would love and really want to be at. But right now, look at libraries. No one wants to go. No one wants to buy books. And yet, at the same time, people are struggling. You see, I tell myself this, and I'm an author. So when I'm writing a book, I understand what it takes, especially non-fiction books. Every single thing that I know, at that particular moment, I'll put it down on paper. I will spend time meditating, going through my mind, trying to get every single thing that I've learned in my entire life, within that specific period of time, to write it down on paper. Every single person who has written a book out there, they've gone through the same process. So what I say is, if we can become like supercomputers, go take a book, read it, download that information, you will be able to learn the things that that particular person wrote, spend an entire lifetime learning within two days or one day. Mm -hmm. If that's not a shortcut, then what is? Mm. I, I am coming 
I want to zero into that problem first. Yes, Did you say that there is a problem in the reading culture? There's a huge problem. Uh, uh, is it scientific? Have you measured it to know that people no longer read? Yes. <laughs> uh, what statistics do you the have? If I told you how. Okay. Um, the problem starts from our educational system. Okay. When you look at most people, when they finish high school, there was a time we used to have this habit. Anytime we finish Form 4, we would go ban books and we would be so happy about mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that is? That is these people communicating something that these things have stressed me in my entire life mm -hmm. and I'm completely done with them. So let's now move on to other parts of life. Now, here's the scientific part of it. That wiring whereby you have to study something which you're not interested in, something which your mind does not align with, it requires your mind to associate reading with pain, to associate reading with something you don't want to spend time doing. So when you grow up, anytime you see a book, your mind goes, no, 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 I don't want to be at that point. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. So this educational system, which by the way, has not really get us towards that which we are naturally cut out to be. You know, you're reading about biology, you're reading about geography, but really, you're not wired. Your mind is not wired to be that. Mm -hmm. So when you're forcing your brain to do something, it will repel back. Yes. So that repulsion is what is taking away our reading culture. Okay. So this shows you how much many people are not aligned with their natural self and they end up hating books which is uh, they're supposed to help them and associating that with pain. We are coming to that, to so, that head. Now let's talk to the student. Enoch, okay. yes. what was the last time you were in the library? Uh, apparently, the last time I was in the library was uh, last, last week. Oh, so you read? Yeah, I usually So you read. went there and read? And uh, majorly, it was uh, because, I usually read, but because of uh, we were doing some exams oh, so i had to oh, to do some revision but so uh, you went to read for exams <laughs> not silly but sometimes actually i love reading oh you yeah. love reading yes have, have you read a complete book a non-fictional have you ever read a non-fictional book cover to cover uh Okay, that's where the problem starts. But yes. usually, I don't finish. Oh, I, 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 I start begin. I, I begin to read, yeah. but sometimes some destructive. Some uh, uh, usually develop another a motive to to read another one. For mm -hmm. example, volume two. So you don't finish. I usually don't finish, but uh, it is not a character that I've already developed. Mm -hmm. yeah, it started soon, but could complete a full uh, script of a novel somehow difficult difficult cover but, to cover yeah I, I i want to know why you think it is difficult for people to finish to start and finish a book uh okay great uh this is the reason why it's difficult for people anytime you see people understand the power of knowledge and they acknowledge it you tell them you know what the only difference between a man who is successful and a man who is suffering is just knowledge so anytime you tell them read books at first they will be so excited about it so they will go like okay right now i'm gonna I'm, I'm buy a book now okay let's read but the moment they get in there their mind has not yet been rewired Mm -hmm. again to to take in that information There's, they still have that subconscious unliking of books so they end up getting distracted they end up getting you know bored in the process so what i think should be done really mm -hmm. for people to um actually have something going on like this curiosity this i want to have this knowledge is to step by step lead people through a program whereby they are going to practically be able to read let's say for example you read one page a day two pages a day three pages a day and at the end of the day let's say for example it takes three months to cultivate a new habit at the end of three months mm -hmm. these people will have already rewired their mind again to associate now this thing with reward okay again, yes you, you get the point of people reading for exams and yeah. you mentioned it somewhere yes that uh, they saw people burn books and, and they did it at my school <laughs> it, they, it was just like a ceremony or like a, a farewell party yeah. to reading 
Yeah. Um, you've made me think about it now that were we signaling the end of reading when we finished form four and all that. And he has also said that when you read for exams, I know you've also, you've, you've also read for exams. Yes, sir. You stream, stream to read, try to get those things in your head, mm -hmm, and then mm -hmm. at the end of it, <laughs> uh, you don't. That's yeah. why you don't remember so many things you have. Ah, uh, yeah. Is it cultivating? Is it bringing a problem? Is it bringing a negative energy mm -hmm. to reading culture and all mm -hmm. this? Yes, yes. It's it's bringing a negative energy to reading culture and cultivating that apathy. Because when you look at reading, when people read for exams, you read in a hurry, not to gain knowledge but to accumulate information. Mm -hmm. There's a difference between knowledge and information. So you want to accumulate as much, as, as much information as possible within a very short period of time so you can go ahead and download the same into, you know, in, into question, whatever, question papers, you're, yeah. the exam you're writing. Mm -hmm. So that doesn't work. Your brain, you can't rush your brain. And the, the, the issue you talked about reading, uh, burning books to signalize the end of, of reading, you realize reading is supposed to be lifelong. There's, I usually say there's no saturation point to reading. There's no day you will just be like, you know what, I've read everything. You know, This is why I usually have a problem with these graduation ceremonies and all these things, degree people are being awarded, because that kind of makes you feel that you have all the, inform every, all the knowledge you need in that particular field. Mm. While the truth is, after you graduate, that is just the starting point of the yes, whole yes. thing. Reading is supposed to be... In fact, they, uh, they say during graduation that you've been given power to read oh, yes. and write. Exactly. Why people think it's the end of reading? But people people don't take that seriously, though. Yes. They don't take that part. They just take it as a just another phrase which is mentioned, but it has an essence to it. Yeah. It's supposed to encourage you and tell you, you know nothing yet. There's still more for you to gain out there. Yeah. Uh, Warren Buffett is one of the richest people in the world. Eh? Uh, he's the, the founder of Berkshire Hathaways and all these other companies. This guy, even at the age of 87, he reads books. He reads a book a day. He says now because of old age, he's slowed down. And then you want to go like, why is this guy so, so, so rich? Mm -hmm. It's because of reading. Mm -hmm. Oprah Winfrey runs the biggest book club in the world. Mm -hmm. Ty Lopez runs the second. And these guys are reading. They actually uh, lean on more of uh, reading culture and cultivating skill than anything else. That's great. Yes, sir. L let's switch on gears to fiction or fictitious and unfictitious books. <coughs> books with fiction, with fictitious characters are things like novels, things that are not real. Somebody just creates a story yeah, yeah. that it happened. That's what we have in most novels. Yes. Yeah. Maybe some may be related to real life stories or situations, yes. but the fact remains that they are fictitious. Yeah, yeah. Some are uh, non fictitious, right? real life, yeah. say science. Yeah. Say, what is your experience when you read fictions and when you read realities? Okay. I personally, I love uh, reading the realistic uh, novels. Yes. The reason is some of the, uh, some of the, 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 some of the things that you get to inquire or you have to apply in your personal life. But the fiction one, actually, it's it's like you're watching a movie. So you personally, people, uh, I personally, f I don't love watching movies which are actually not really. Uh, I, I don't have that, uh, that attitude, I don't develop that attitude to read those uh, fic uh, fiction novels. But the moment I read the realistic novels, I start to know uh, these and these, some themes that I usually face in life, uh, I can handle them in this way because I read this book. Which, develop, uh, which directed me to solve such situations. Okay, so, thank you, Enoch. We are going yeah. to pick it just from there okay. to get uh, experts' uh, reaction. We are taking a short break, a very short break, and then we are coming back to you to end this conversation. In life, and we were getting the experts' opinion on what he thinks about reading too much drama that didn't happen, that was created by somebody, creative work, and uh, real life things or researches and all that. Yes, what, what, what's the implication? Okay, um, for me, I value all kind, all type of work, both fiction and non-fiction, because also I, I feel like fiction 
um, to some extent, it's a creation in one's mind. And in the modern time, we're living in a creation of somebody. I mean, like things which are making life convenient to us. They are a creation of a ma man, right? I mean, phones and everything that we're using, man came with something creative. So when you read this, they unlock something in you of creativity. You understand? You start like, okay, this person is thinking along this line. So also for me, I can be able to think according to so it creates some, it unlocks some creativity in you. But also, books which are, let's say, stories of real life happenings, they're so inspiring because uh, there's, there's a book I read called, uh, named Kontiki. Kontiki is a, is a story of a guy who crossed the Atl I don't, I, Atlantic Ocean, maybe, uh, in, a ya in, a, in a raft. Mm -hmm. So this is a story of inspiration. It's a story which tells you no matter what you go in life, things can also be it makes you relate mm -hmm. your situation mm -hmm. with this guy. The so the important. And yes, inspiring. every kind of work is important, both nonfiction and fiction. They have the same impact in our lives. So do you encourage people to read both, or where you, what you like, you read what you like, or something? Um, I encourage people to have a balance. Or to have but a balance. To have a balance between fiction and nonfiction. Because sometimes you can read too much fiction and then it's not helping you. You're just yes. living in your own imaginations. Mm -hmm. But also you need to read books about, you know, <laughs> something just came to me. When you look at back, when you look, you look, you look back at, in our high school, eh, in our studies, there was no book which was titled Money. I mean, mm -hmm. and that's an important aspect of mm -hmm. our life. So mm -hmm. anything, I usually say this, anything you're going through, anything you can figure out, there's always a book about it. Why don't you just go and find it, read it, elevate your mind. You don't have to, you know, put your mind in this one, one way where you're only reading what you're studying. Be diverse. Read about psychology. Read about journalism. Have this diversity of wisdom mm. in the books you read. Yes. Enoch, let's talk about barriers. Yeah. What diverts your mind when you start reading or what disturbs you or distracts you? What makes you not go on with reading if you want to read and all that? Uh, the first thing is, the moment I start reading and I have my, my device closer to me, uh -huh. that is the first barrier. Uh -huh. The moment I've received any message, mm -hmm. any a pop message, mm. and already I've been alerted, mm. my mind diverts mm -hmm. from the book to the message. Yes. Secondly, uh, it depends on uh, the, f the platform where I'm reading the, uh, the book. Maybe it is an online book. So the moment I'm in, uh, you know, the moment I'm in my phone, it may, it, there, there are more uh, distractives compared to when I read my uh, hard, hard book novel. Mm -hmm. So that personally uh, will not make me to, develop, to continue reading that book. Mm -hmm. And uh, thirdly, the moment I'm reading, in the process of reading, maybe sometimes I felt like, I've read a story, and that story already happened. I personally, in personal life, I experienced it, or I saw my friend experiencing it. So I'll start diverting my minds to that, mm -hmm. and I come up with some solutions whereby already I've not finished the square reading the, the novel, mm -hmm. but already I've started coming with some solutions. Oh, so you. I don't have that need for me to complete the book. I asked him that yeah. to introduce now the barriers of the reading culture, okay. the poisons. Uh -huh. What poisons the reading culture in our country? One, number one poison is free books. Anytime you get something for free, you don't pay attention to it. Mm -hmm. So avoid it. anything which gives you, you know, there's a free app where I can get free books. You will not pay attention. You will not put yourself the discipline to sit down and get your value back. So I suggest go and invest. Real money, use it, buy a book, spend. Are you saying this because you are an author, you want your books to be bought? <laughs> no, it's the truth. It's uh, a psychology tool. If I give you something for free, you won't pay attention to it. How about if you buy it? You will be like, okay, I got to take care of this thing because I spend money in it, mm -hmm. right? So anytime you spend, you say, okay, I'm gonna take my 1,000, go and buy this book. I, you will make sure that book, you will read it. Yes. But if I give it to you for free, you mm -hmm. won't ever read it. Mm -hmm. So invest, have something to track you so that it makes sure you have, you get your value back. I number two, you. number two, eBooks versus the physical hard books. Yes. Yes. yes, avoid eBooks. 
they're important they are uh, they are the same thing but avoid them because of distractions you see anytime you get this you are used to your phone mm -hmm. your phone is something which subconsciously it has already gotten into your subconscious like this is where you get memes you know your mind knows anytime you hold it's there's nothing serious you're doing there so anytime you're reading you're just something pops in TikTok. you want to you want to check your mind will never concentrate i usually say the effect that you get when you're holding a book like this you're reading it's it will never be the same when you read a book in ebook eh, it's like you are in a gym but then you're watching so you're just like you're watching so people walk out and then you, you want to be like oh man <laughs> and I'm fit, expect, I'm fit, you, you know expect to lose weight and <laughs> exactly you, expect, yeah. you will need to go into the gym physically yes. do it reading is to the mind what lifting weights is to muscles so you will need to do the actual thing he talked about phones yes yeah, yeah that and you are now talking about it as a distractor so that we don't read from uh the phone, the yes, ebooks. Yes. But I want to know how exactly you deal with it. Where do you put your phone when you start reading or writing? I have my specific reading times. That's all you need. Like any, every day, make sure you have a time where you've allocated. You say, This is a time where I'm not going to do nothing else but read. It could be in the morning, it could be in the evening. So that time you put your phone on flight mode or you just put it away, completely mm -hmm. put mm -hmm. it away. Mm -hmm. Take your book, read, write, uh, sit down. Take uh, your notebook write notes read read put your mind in there read how long how long is that how long do you reading you can it you? depends on you how fast a reader you are or how much you you can get uh, information in you so it can be an hour I normally I suggest that you start with an hour mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. so and uh, probably do it in the morning when you wake up the first thing because when you start, that's when you're reading, your mind is churning. It's like an engine. It's churning. It's, it, it's, you know, all these things are being activated. It will start your day well. If you can, then you can also do it in the evening. Mm. That's after maybe you meditate, you clear your mind, you've rested, you can read it. So that now, when you're sleeping, and it, everything that you've read, that's exactly what will, will be going on in your Thank mind. You. Exactly. So Thank it you. will stick in. Where, where do you read? Where do you read? I know you, you don't often go to library. You go to library when you have exams. So where do you read your own non-academic uh, work? Okay. Uh, Major, that's, I, I wanted to that he may focus on the e-learning. E uh, some, uh, some authors prefer to uh, share their books online. Mm -hmm. I personally, I love reading my books online mm -hmm. compared to the phys uh, physical one. Mm -hmm. So you'll just see me, uh, it is a rare, rare condition whereby you'll see me in library mm -hmm. compared in my, uh, in my in phone. In your phone. Yeah. And the, the ones in your phone are free books. Yeah. You know? some, mm -hmm. some of them are free mm -hmm. to purchase them. As a student, very you know, cheap, uh, yeah, I can give you an example cheap. as a student, uh, also in journalism. Mm. We were told uh, sometimes back that we purchased a book, Chose Langu, mm -hmm. and that book actually it wasn't uh, online, mm. so you had to buy it. Mm. So another another person came up with an idea. He modified the book and put it in a uh, PDF form. Then that's that's what circulated among students compared mm -hmm. to the uh, when, when you compare those who went. Is to that buy back it, to high school? No, in oh, campus. Here. Oh, in the campus. In campus mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. So when you compare uh, those who bought the book, there are very few. Yeah. Compared to those Most who Most people read online. PDF. Yeah. O okay. So. But but now now come back to my question. You yeah. have stored that somewhere in yeah. your subconscious uh, part of brain. Mm. Uh, where do you read? Where? You, or you say you read in the via the phone. Yeah. So maybe in the bed. Some. Oh, okay. When sleeping. Yeah. The place, uh, some, any free place that I am. For example, I'm in a session. Mm. I told you that I'm a host yes. uh, as an MC. Mm. When I'm done, then I have to retrieve. I have to, th those being tired, when I'm, I'm, I'm a, a free place. I so, Enoch, it's myself. clear that you don't dedicate a specific time for reading, yeah, as he any says. Time I can and you, you've not dedicated a place for reading, and you're advocating for reading of the soft copies and all okay. that. Exactly. And uh, he was talking about deterioration of the reading culture yeah. in this country. Yes. So, you see, your points are being validated here <laughs> by <laughs> Enoch. <laughs> By also, yeah. I, also yeah. I, had, I had him saying that, uh, you, you asked him, 
how do you manage your phone for example, your device yes. and reading? Mm -hmm. yes. He puts uh, it away. Okay, it is a clear indication that I have mine here. Yeah. I don't know. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, the problem is... <laughs> You see this, but, but not react uh -huh. to his uh, to his methods yeah, and claims. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You, you see, um, there's this book about Lim Limitless by Jim Quick. He says, uh, the way for you to unlock the ultimate potential in your mind, you will need to avoid, one of the things that he says you need to avoid is social media yes. distractions. So social media, you should not be on social media. If you're not doing anything important, don't be on social media. So instead of putting your gadget where you are, just put it away and say, you know, for the next two hours, I will, be, I will dedicate this to uh, developing my mind. And also coming back to his point whereby he says about buying books, that's also part of what is killing the, ca the, the, the culture, culture mm -hmm. because when you look at it, you're also denying the author something. Yes. So we will <laughs> not have new voices with new creativity which will spark something, an interest in us mm -hmm. for the next 10 years if people are not going to buy books. Mm. Because although there's somebody who will dedicate their time to write, they will need to feed, they will need to pay rent, they will need to travel. Who is going to pay them if we are consuming their work for free? So that would mean their people won't be writing. People because won't be writing. Because you won't be writing if you don't have a return on your investment. Exactly. And Do you get it? <laughs> I'm not getting can, it. Can you <laughs> write and then you don't get anything out of it? People, you give for free. Uh, um, I do sing sometimes. Yes, sir. And... Uh, I feel it when somebody says that um, mm -hmm. we send you your song yako kwa WhatsApp. Yeah, you know you said for free, and you said you sing your own bundles, yes. and then um, you spent a lot of money in studio recording yes, it, yeah, preparing yeah. it, and all that. Mm -hmm. And then somebody says, "To me, your song, uh, it's a nice one. Uh, okay. It doesn't buy." Yeah, I may ask the, the uh, this question. Mm. For example, as uh, technology changes, yes, and uh, you find more authors. Personally, I've met some of them. They prefer to share their books only. Yeah. So maybe through the online uh, platform, that's why they can have something to boost their uh, their, their writings. Uh. So, and also the nature of reading hard books. Uh. Uh, personally, as a students and also my friends, we we take it as a in a tradition uh. um, Address this, um, address yeah. this part. Uh, yes, Check sir. this out. Uh, I'm, I am a chief operations manager at Applied Knowledge Publishers, and I normally advise authors when they come, don't share your books online. Why would they share their books online? Print books. Matter of fact, Amazon. Amazon is um, Amazon. You have to pay yes. for you to read those books. Yes. So all these other things which are happening behind the curtains, it's just unprofessional analysis. You understand? And um, that is going to kill a lot of creativity. It's going to create an apathy. People are going to be like, I don't want to write because maybe I will never make sales. But people, let's say in the developed countries, they understand the intricacies of this matter. That's why you'll find someone has a home library. And speaking of home libraries, I, I feel like every single person should have a home library. I mean, is it, is it not a coincidence? Anytime you walk into a big office, you'll find some books at the back, uh, yes. you know, at yes. the back cover. Or if you see some <laughs> prominent lawyer talking, there are books at there the back cover. Yes. I mean. So those uh, already graduate, during, after graduation, mm. they usually go to have some peaks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. the background yes. actually yeah. me personally yeah. i usually take it as a, a <laughs> form of a be mm. beauty yeah. so but imagine if if that thing which they want to communicate to the world they are actually actualized it the books they are taking pictures with they have read it yes can you imagine this if you dedicate your time right now to reading a book a day and reading a book doesn't even need to be like from page to page no mm -hmm. some books even just have one thing Yes. For you to take. I usually say there's nothing new under the sun. Mm. So something which one author is going to write about, another author is definitely going to write about yes. in a different way. Mm -hmm. But in there, somewhere in between those pages, there's one thing, one thing which is unique. So why don't you become like a smart computer where you pick just one thing, all right? You, ch you, you pick one, one, one thing in one book like that. In a year, you'll have read about how many books? 365. That's 365 worth of new knowledge. Yeah, yeah. You, you uh, by the way, I know, speaking of authors, my time is running yes. and uh, we've not talked about authors. Oh. How can one just decide to write a book? How do you start? Ah, good How question. Do you start? Yes. Uh, I believe every single person is, is an author. Yes. So let's ditch this myth whereby 
I mean, you will need, you will need to be talented to write. Yeah, uh, um, some people, non let's say fiction, they will need some kind of talent. But every single person is unique and they know something that another person doesn't know. In your position where you're sitting right now, you have accumulated years of knowledge in interviews. Mm. That knowledge, someone else needs it. Mm -hmm. So why don't you just package it into a small something and then sell it? We're living in the information era. In the next 10 years, 5 years, people are going to be selling information. And it's already happening right Pure now. Pure information. Consultancies are... Mm -hmm. So why don't you, you find every single person in their capacity where they're working, why don't, why, don't, why don't they just package what they know, the little they know, everything. I get you. So I think the next, the next generation of billionaires are those who are investing Selling in information. Selling knowledge. Are, are you getting it? And are you, trying, are you planning to, to write anytime soon? In fact, from here, I'm going to start. Every uh, single person. He has inspired you. Has inspired. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you, you just I'll need... I'll start. Uh, it's not hard. You just need to find somebody. For us at Applied Knowledge Publishers, mm -hmm. we offer free consultancy. Oh. You come around, mm -hmm. tell you, okay, buddy, what do you have? Okay, I have knowledge about this and this and this and this. I know how to do this. Okay, this is how, these are the steps in which we can help you write your books before you know it, within one month. Where, you have where, something. Where is this Applied, applied Knowledge? Applied Knowledge Publishers it along Thicker Road, Blessed House, Office Number 21, opposite Garden oh, City where, Mall. Where exactly along Thicker Road? Where opposite Garden City Mall. Oh, opposite Garden yes, City Mall. Yes, sir. Garden City is a landmark. Exactly. So it's, it's, it's easy to find. Yes. I'll walk there. Personally, I'll walk <laughs> there. Uh, it's we, important. We yes. 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 So Can we um, just a little read what people have uh, said online? So many people are watching us, by the way, Perfect. from the look of the things what we've got from uh, our social media. And as you can interact with us, we can, we'll read your comment if you comment on at White Five for any of the social media platform. And now I'm coming with the Facebook comments. And we asked, this was our questions. Mbona, watu wapendi kusama novels siku hizi? Mbona watu wapendi kusama novels? And people have answered that questions. Many of you, in fact, we cannot finish reading uh, your comments. But now there's one here, who is called uh, Tangila Voice. said, good morning. Nini wenye mnaona vile tuko bisi, na akili kifikiria tu pesa, ukigeuka huku ni kelele za politicians. The other side, Gavaha ina 4 million kwa vijana, alafu. So this guy is talking about psychological uh, masses yeah, and all yeah. that people are busy looking mm. for money can i answer that? yes um um what i feel is you see when when you're looking out for this everything which is happening trying to find solutions in places where you know you can get solutions why don't you just immerse yourself in books man i mean like there are books which talk about how they talk about everything you need to know mm -hmm. if it's money you're looking after you're chasing after there are books which will give you a head start on how you can be able to, to move on. So instead of looking out for all these things, oh, the government needs to give me some money to invest, uh, all these mm. things were happening. Why don't you just pick a book, man? <laughs> Even read a, read. Speaking of picking up, there's yourself. somebody called Peter. Peter Ki, Kinarao. Yeah. Kijana mdigital. Ana sema, nilijaribu kusoma a novel nikikunywe juice kama mzungu. Hata siku maliza page moja, nilikuwa nimemaliza juice. From that day, novel, novel niliachia watu wenye uh, wame, wame make it in life. Uh. So this guy is like trying to read the way others uh. read. Akona kajuo mahali, so anasip. <laughs> okay. So, okay. What, what's your comment about this? Oh, you want to let 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 no comment first. You, do, you also do Jewish Some, as you do. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes we try to put ourselves in some people for like uh, while reading. Mm -hmm. yes. when, for, the, for example, we are in this session and uh, ukiangalia unapata there are some drinks hapo tukiongea yes mm -hmm. so kuna mtu mwingine in the same same session atataka kuweka the same situation yes what well, your comment on it please i i think uh, know yourself yes just know yourself i mean there are people who are too far off i mean like you understand if it can work for you, then the other ways of mm. actually getting that. We have podcasts, we have audiobooks, we have movies. Watch those. Somebody is saying, uh, it's called Dennis. He's saying, Dennis uh, Muka. He's saying, I'm too lazy for it, man. I start, I don't finish. What should I do? Advise this guy. 
You're not too lazy, it's just a mindset you have on you. The minute, the day you'll realize how much power books have, man, you will never be lazy again. Let me tell you just that. So just condition, I mean, get yourself started on a, on a routine of getting your natural capabilities of reading back and you will have it. It's just a matter of practice by the day, two weeks, one week, you'll be good. You're not lazy. Okay, there's somebody saying Imani, Imani, Imani stuff. He says, Good morning. Novels nowadays, it had to make a J and the social media. Is social media a replacement for reading? It will never be a replacement for reading. That I can tell you that for sure. Yeah. You know, I usually say this. People might, as, as much as people might think social media is going to give you all the information you need, books, books, books have, look, nations have, have come, they've perished, kingdoms have come, they've perished, but still we have books dating, mm -hmm. 18 whatever. They're still there. They will never fade. Somebody saying some novels are boring <laughs> to read. Is this bothering choices of what to read and all that? Yeah. Yesterday I talked to my friend, mm -hmm. he told me that uh, he should select some of the novels he can read. Maybe you are uh, expecting to read this novel, it is a love novel, talking about love, then your expectation is different, you find mm -hmm. a fiction, mm -hmm. but we wish it doesn't uh, major in love. So you just select, in a board, in a board to so ile kitu una expect alafu na pia some of them there are some others wanna hit direct mm -hmm. wanna kuja direct if you want to get money do this and this so ukiangalia ukienda hiyo direct it is so difficult for you okay people have commented you cannot mm -hmm. finish them people like Mwendoa, leonard rayson uh rayshan ja ki jasiki grace benson uh, Lupian, MC Joan, uh, Lenox Ocheng, uh, so many comments we can't finish, but time is of essence to us, time is money, time is what we sell here. I want your uh, closing remarks, maybe a word or two to your fellow students on reading going forward, things you've learned here, and maybe what you are going to do going forward, Enoch. Okay, uh, to my fellow youths, uh, the moment we began to read, that's where you'll be free to stress and everything in this life. So the moment we start to develop this habit of reading, we are now free. We are now free. Oh, oh we pay GMB. Yeah, 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 personally. <laughs> 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 Just yes. moment of truth, poor wisdom. Oh, okay, um, what I feel is the solution you're looking for, desperately working out to look for, is in books. You'll find it because there's always a book about everything, and every author who's written a book, they don't joke about writing it. Everything they, that has worked in their life, they put it down on paper for you to download. Become like a supercomputer. Accumulate all this kind of knowledge. Read all these kind of books. And... Now later you can say, you know what, it didn't work for me. And also, understand this, whatever you know, you can always package it, package it into a book. It's not a myth, it's not a talent, whatever. You can always write a book. Just find the right person to lead you and you will make money and also sell your creativity. Yeah, and also we need to unlock creativity in young people as they grow up, okay? So if you have babies or you have your younger sisters and brothers, begin gifting them books. Let them understand this is something valuable. Let them un let begin rewiring their minds to not associate books with pain, but reward, but with prosperity and all these things because that's actually the truth. We are here civilized because we went to school and read books. I mean, look at if that's exactly led us to where we are. How about if we read a book every single day? How far could we be? So let's start with this there apathy of I don't read a book, I don't love books. Start your start your own library. Do something, okay? If you start buying books right now. Every single month you buy books. By the time you get to your 40s or 50s, you will have already a full library to give to your kids or your grandkids and they will appreciate the knowledge. Nice. That's nice. Uh, you see, there are so many people like me who want to write, but you cannot write if you are not reading. So you start by reading. I think yeah. this is very educative and informative. Mm. We, it's not for granted. It's not just like any other MCM. I propose that 
you watch this again and again, we are going to put it in YouTube. Just search at White Five Four. And going forward, let's change. Let's be a reading nation so that we don't kill the reading culture in Kenya. This has been Why in the Morning. Enoch and Joseph, thank yeah. you for joining us for this talk. And uh, everybody who made this segment or this uh, MCM a success from the camera people, TX production, sound and all that, thank you for making it. And you who was watching us from home, Thank you for making time for us. Till we meet next time.